Everything was similar, but so different to my first time on a plane. It had lost its glow. I observed the bag squeezed into the upper compartments. The smell of the plane made me feel sick this time. I strolled the aisle and found my seat. Sitting by the window no longer excited me like it had in the past, when I used to watch the plane ascend and the ground shrink until cars were ants and people were not visible. This time, I could hear the arguments of angry passengers, upset with their seating. Their voices were rising as I took my seat. The high-pitched whine of a baby nearby pierced my eardrums as my seat rumbled from the kicks of an energetic seven-year-old. I settled into my seat, gazing out of the window. The joy of riding up into the sky had long passed. The excitement of riding in the sky had gradually siphoned. It had shifted into a mundane task. I heard the captain's voice ring across the plane, the same repetitive message. But shortly after, I, ho I heard the noise I was longing for, the roar as the plane accelerated down the runway. I drowned out the noises and the kicking and the complaining and just awaited takeoff, which would signify my flight is one step closer to ending. In the first group of sentences, the narrator draws a comparison between his opinion the first time on a plane and his views on planes now. The narrator had idealized airplanes in his childhood, but he has now come to realize they are now not all that great. The glow is what differentiates the plane between now and the narrator's view as a child, as he no longer thinks of it as a magical place. In the second group of sentences, it uses both objective and subjective imagery. It is effective to show the readers exactly what made the airplane a bad experience while it also uses subjective imagery to show what the narrator personally thought was bad about the trip. This allows the reader to picture the madness of the airplane while it also allows them to relate to the narrator and leave room for their interpretation. This use of imagery is effective in helping the readers to picture the airplane as a gloomy environment, which is what the purpose of the paragraph is. In the first sentence here, we use the word stroll. Though the word stroll uses it as a positive connotation, we mean to use it in a negative way. We intend to use it to portray our narrator's disinterest in the plane and how he is not in any rush. We also used a metaphor in the second sentence to describe how the narrator used to be excited when he watched the ascent of a, of a plane, and he now does not experience the same feeling of excitement about airplanes. We also use the airplane as an extended metaphor that represents how things we use to appreciate in life quickly become trivial nuisances as we age. The main purpose of this cluster of sentences was to portray our dominant impression, which was a feeling of melancholy. The narrator describes the atmosphere through an objective lens. He illustrates what he is observing, but still displays a melancholy tone by describing things that are so often associated with annoyance or sadness. This is evident with the baby crying and passengers arguing. These experiences obviously mar his view of an airplane. For the fifth group of sentences, the narrator verbalizes his feelings of an airplane. The airplane was a place he idealized in the past, and it was something that caused him excitement. Now he just finds it mundane, which is synonymous with our dominant impression of melancholy. Vantage point is vital to our dominant impression throughout the story, as the narrator seeing the trip as a mundane task greatly differs from his views as a child. For the sixth cluster of sentences, when the narrator says that he heard the captain's voice ringing across the plane, the same repetitive message, the word ringing and the phrase same repetitive give off a negative connotation for the sentence, which works well with the dominant impression. By using these words, it makes the narrator seem sad and disinterested in the plane setting. For the seventh group of sentences, it puts a final emphasis on our dominant impression. The language shows the author's hope of finally getting off of the plane and how he was looking forward to the experience ending. By having the narrator show the idea of hope as our last line, it shows that at the moment he is in a state of melancholy while on the plane, and that once he gets off, the gloomy experience will finally end, which is what the dominant impression of the paragraph is.